first night vision scope when I was 14. I'm 31 now. So I've gotten quite a bit of hands-on experience with night vision over the years. I was deathly afraid of damaging this scope. I had spent $1,600 on it at 14. That was all the money I made mowing yards and working for other people up until that point. I'm honestly ashamed looking back that I had spent that money at Optics Planet, but that's a different conversation for a totally another day. I was so afraid of damaging this scope that I would never take the cover off of it unless it was dark. I understand a lot more about night vision now than I ever did before. And having this simple understanding of your night vision tube should enable you to have confidence in how you run your night vision and in what conditions you run your tube in so you know you won't damage the tube barring some freak accident happens. Back in the day, before they had LEDs and LED displays, it was plasma TVs. I'm probably missing some steps in there in technology advancements, but anyway, that's not why we're here. There was an electron gun in the back of those old TVs, or computer screens, that would project onto a phosphor screen. This is what brought about screensavers, because if you left an image on the screen, like a Word document open with text, you would be constantly projecting those same images onto the phosphor screen. After projecting the same thing for long periods of time, you would get a burned in image or ghosting on that phosphor screen. That's why they created screensavers. So the gun was constantly changing what it was emitting against that phosphor screen on the inside of the TV or the computer screen. Night vision is different technology and a different application, but this concept still rings true. If you keep moving or scanning when you come across a bright light source, you will stand far less of a chance of damaging your night vision permanently. Bear in mind the intensity of the light will change the length of time that it takes to mark the night vision tube. Extremely concentrated or powerful light sources can even mark or damage a night vision tube instantly even while the night vision tube is powered off. Lasers and the sun are two great examples of deadly light sources for a phosphor screen to come in contact with. The topic of the sun is an interesting one. The guys over at Dirty Civilian did an excellent YouTube video on this topic exactly. If you have your night vision tube pointed directly at the sun, even with the power off and the battery removed, you can still burn the phosphor screen. The reason for this is because of the intensity of the light is so great from the sun that it can still pass through the tube. The sun then burns that phosphor screen in your night vision, essentially killing those phosphor particles and creating unrepairable damage. When those phosphor particles die, they turn black. You guys by now know that we offer you thermal and night vision goods. And frankly, I don't think I've done enough justice telling you that we stock all kinds of other gear and equipment as well. So we're gonna talk about two optics that are my favorite optics out of our entire lineup. And the first one is the Crossfire Red Dot by Vortex. So we are now on the inexpensive spectrum. This is extremely inexpensive for you guys to purchase and run. They're built like tanks. I use them on everything from my RPK here to my Galils and AR-15s and all sorts of other weapon platforms. They've served me extremely well. My other favorite optic that we carry on our website is the RH-25 by Infrared Outdoors. So this RH-25 is an extremely potent unit and this is on the expensive side of the spectrum. However, I've got some good news for you guys as well. The RH-25 is currently discounted a substantial amount. So all of those details are in the description down in this video. You will save yourselves a ton of money by getting an RH-25. We'll get it out to you fast. You're gonna have thermal capability that is helmet mountable, weapon mountable, and handheld. So guys, if you wanna support us, there are two great ways to do just that. Check all the information down in the description. Let's get back to the video. Understanding the balance between keeping your night vision guarded from certain specific light sources at all costs and simply keeping moving across other light sources is very important. If you do have to scan past a light source, the balance between how fast to keep moving and the intensity of the light are directly correlated. The brighter the light, the faster you will need to scan past it to avoid damage. If, for example, you just swipe a laser past your tube, you're going to have a laser burn across your phosphor screen, which is serious 
permanent damage. Now let's say that you ended up damaging your tube in a freak accident. You then need to black box it. Black boxing consists of putting your burned night vision with the power on in a box that allows no light into it. You're going to start by putting in a brand new battery. This ensures the longest run time for your PVS-14 while it's being black boxed. After turning on the unit with the new battery, you will simply want to put on its protective lens cover with the pinhole in it, and then in a box, and then in the closet. With these multiple steps, you're ensuring that there is no possible light getting to that image tube. When you black box night vision, you're basically resetting the phosphor in your unit by putting power to the phosphor particles and exciting those particles without them actually receiving any light to amplify. You're essentially reteaching those phosphor particles to move in their correct manner instead of being damaged and not moving properly. The holographic image that the phosphorus remembered will then essentially reset if it's not too bad of a burn. Through this process, the particles will relearn how to move properly to show you the image that you need to see. Understanding night vision and knowing that these devices are sensitive, but they're not that sensitive, is important. You don't have to live in fear like I did all those years. Understanding the right and left boundaries of night vision and how to use it effectively without damaging it is important. I hope this video may have helped put some night vision users at ease. If you have more questions about this topic, please don't hesitate to email us at cs at arcane Com. If you want to shoot me a text to schedule a phone call with me directly, my number can be found across our site at multiple different places. My goal is to help you get what you need to get out into the darkness and become defiantly free.